Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be finding the inverse of a function. We have f of x equals x plus ln x, and we're going to be looking for f inverse. So first of all, a couple questions to think about. Does this function have an inverse? And if it does, is it a unique inverse? Or can it have more than one? For example, consider a quadratic function which has a minimum or maximum point. Therefore, it's not always going to pass the horizontal line test. Actually, it never does. So you kind of have to uh, split it up into two pieces, right? So whenever you have a function that is not one to one, right? Like y equals x squared, it does not, it's not going to have a unique inverse. So those are some of the things that I want you to think about. And now let's get to work. Let's try to answer the first question first. Does this function have an inverse? Now, every function should have an inverse, in my opinion, even though you cannot always express it easily. But again, it depends on the intervals. If it's just curving around, you can kind of split it into different intervals on which it is going to be one to one. So you can find an inverse for each interval. For example, for f of x equals x squared, we can consider positive real numbers and negative real numbers separately and then find two inverses. Make sense? So, in order to understand if this function is bijective, we're actually going to look at something interesting. That's going to be calculus, okay? So, let's go ahead and differentiate this function f. The derivative of x is 1 and the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. Great. Now, what is this supposed to mean? Well, when you take the first derivative of a function, it tells you whether the function is increasing or decreasing depending on whether it's negative or positive. In this case, this expression, the first derivative is going to be positive if x is positive. I'm not necessarily saying it's always going to be negative if x is negative because x can be negative like 2 and f can still be positive. But we know if x is positive, this is definitely positive. And another thing that is very helpful is the fact that x is positive. Why? Because of ln x. We want to define this number. We want, it to, we want it to be well defined over the set of real numbers. And because of ln x, x needs to be positive. So we satisfy the inequality. In other words, f prime is always positive, which means f is increasing. And what happens to an increasing function? Well, let's go ahead and I don't know if I included the graph here. I believe I did. Let me go ahead and double check. Oops, uh, not really. So, but anyways, we can kind of think about it and maybe come up with something. First of all, when I say the graph of something, I'm kind of talking about x plus ln x. So we took the derivative, right? We got 1 plus 1 over x. And then it is always positive. So f is increasing it's always increasing which means when you have an increasing function let's just think about being defined for positives it is going to be one to one so you draw any horizontal lines it's going to pass the horizontal line test make sense great now let's go ahead and see how we can find the inverse in this case since it's going to have a unique inverse now i will start with f of x equals x plus ln x and then I will replace f of x with y. And I'll, I'm thinking about making a separate video for finding the inverse of pretty much any function, the general methods. There's two methods that I usually use. But anyways, and then I want to switch sides because I like to have the x on the left hand side. This step is fairly easy. You just switch sides. And then since I have the ln x, I notice. And by the way, my goal is to solve for x. So if you can solve for x from here, then you're going to be able to find the inverse. But you kind of have to switch the variables at the end, or sometimes you do that first. But I'm going to solve for x. I'll go for x, okay? And I'll be doing e to the power of both sides. Whenever you see x plus ln x, you should do it. Even if you see x times ln x, I think you should do it because it's going to help you. Now, the next thing we do is separate this into a product. And then consider the fact that e to the power ln x is equal to x. So this becomes x. 
and this gives you e to the power x times x, which you can write as x e to the power x. Awesome. Great. Does this remind you anything? Hopefully it does. And this is equal to e to the power y. And you're probably thinking, uh-oh, Lambert comes up, right? Obviously. So I'm talking about Lambert's W function. If you're not familiar with Lambert's W function, it's a special type of function, which is the inverse of x e to the x. That's why we're going to be able to solve for x using that functional notation. Okay? So Lambert coming to the rescue. So I'm going to go ahead and Lambert both sides, or W both sides, and that's going to give us something nice. Let's go ahead and do it. Big W on the left and big W on the right. So if you have something like A equals B, then obviously you can apply any function on these inputs. Because if two inputs are the same, then their outputs will also be the same. Why? Because you cannot have two different outputs for the same input. Make sense? Okay, great. Now, the output for the x e to the x, if you apply Lambert's W function on it, it is going to be a simple x. That's how we solve for x from x e to the x. And that's going to equal W of e to the power y, where W represents Lambert's W function. Make sense? So far, so good. Now, here's the thing. We are supposed to find f inverse of x, which means the infer inverse function needs to be expressed in terms of x, not in terms of y. So we were able to solve for x, it's good, but notice that the answer is in terms of y. And you're like, why? Because you solve for x, obviously the right hand side is going to be all in terms of y. That's the variable that wasn't isolated, right? So here's what we need to do. Take this expression and notice that whenever you have f of x equals y and you switch x and y, f just becomes f inverse. In other words, f inverse of y is equal to x or x is equal to f inverse of y. Make sense? So, in other words, if f takes x to y like this, if this is f, this is going to be f inverse. The inverse map, right? So what does this tell you? This one. Let's go ahead and re rewrite it. F inverse of y equals w of e to the power y, which means f inverse of x is w of e to the x. So in other words, the inverse function for x plus ln x is w e to the power x. Make sense? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the result from Wolfram Alpha. Yay, that's the inverse function. Check. And here's the graph of these two functions. Notice that they are symmetrical with respect to y equals x. One of them is x plus ln x. Find out which one is x plus ln x and which one is the other one. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.